Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Setham and welcome back to another guide. Today in this video, folks, I'm going to be showing you how to solo the Red Dragon. This is quite an easy fight if you know what to do. And it is going to be a similar method with my Undead Dragon video. So, of course, if you guys enjoy this video, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos. And why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Finally, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. So, as I was saying before... I'm going to be showing you how to solo the Red Dragon. Same thing will apply for the Green Dragon, which can be found in the Unnamed City. For this, I am going to be using the Dragon Bow, or the Dragon Bone Bow. You get these bones from killing any dragons, and obviously, you learn the recipe by killing the Undead Dragon. If you haven't seen my video for that, I will, of course, link it at some point in an information uh, bubble at the top of this video, as well as at the end of the video. Now, at the moment, I am, of course, cloaked and in god mode. I will be doing this without any of those cheats. And as you can see, by being here, I am not aggroing the boss. So, the way we're going to do this, we don't really want to get involved in any fights. I am going to be showing you what the boss looks like. This is, of course, a world boss. And around the world bosses, you will have little mini dragons that you will have to fight. Uh, that is also, of course, a good source of dragon bone. Now, of course, the downside to the dragon bone weapons is that they have uh, very bad durability. However, they are not expensive to repair. Once you've crafted them, all you need is a couple of dragon bones, and that's that. The weapon is repaired. Now, the plan for this is, of course, for me to fight this boss from a height advantage. So. There are many places I could climb, as you can see, and all I want to do is be on one of these walls. Now, I'm looking for the little dragons that these guys have, but unfortunately I cannot seem to find one. However, do bear in mind that you will have to fight them when you do come here. So, I guess there aren't any. We'll just get on with the fight. So, this is the location for the boss right here. And it is definitely worth fighting them and getting the loot off of them. You also want to harvest them for their heads, which do make amazing trophies, by the way. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to climb up here. Now, if you go towards the dragon boss, you will be in an area with corruption, which is not a good thing, as the more time you spend in a corrupted area, the more it reduces uh, your stamina and health. It won't go further down than half of what it is, but of course that is a bit of a pain. So I kind of want to be here on this thing right here. That should be high enough for me to be able to fire down on it. And I should be well out of range. So I'm going to start aggroing it. For this of course I am using snake arrows and the whole point of it is for me to of course dot it up. We want to keep 10 stacks of poison on it, and once we've got 10 stacks of poison, we'll just let that do its thing. Of course, this will make the fight a bit lengthy in time. However, it is the safest way of doing it. I mean, there are different ways of fighting this boss. You can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. You just need to know his moves and how to avoid them. And, of course, that does also involve a greater element of risk whereas this one as you will see is pretty much risk free and he won't be able to get to me at all now the most dangerous thing on these guys is their fire breath and you want to avoid that at all cost uh, obviously as I'm going to be fighting them from this height advantage I will not see it because he's just going to try and get close to me to attack me but I will be cl while I will be close enough to him, I will still be out of his attack range. And so you'll know that a dragon is going to perform a fire breath because just before that, they sort of shake their head. When you see them do that, just get out of their face 
as fast as possible because that is going to kill you no matter what you do. You do not want to get hit by that. Now, also very important to note, I do not have any points put in um, accuracy or archery. Most of my points are invested in encumbrance. Obviously, I do get some points from the royal armor that I'm wearing and everything else. I think I've got 30 points in uh, vitality and the rest in strength. So that is my layout, as I said, I am not, or as you can guess, I am not relying on the arrows doing too much damage, it's actually the dot. Now as you'll see, he will turn towards me, it will look like it's quite close, but I am still far away from him uh, to be able to prevent him from trying to hit me. There are a couple of uh, moments where it does get your heart pounding a tad bit here. But it is not that bad at all. So we're now just firing an arrow from time to time. Just to keep the 10 stacks of poison. If you have a friend with you, you might want that friend using some damaging arrows. And there are plenty of places you can purchase yourself. And the way to fight this guy and be out of his range is obviously you want to have the height advantage over him. So that way he cannot perform his attacks. As you can see, he just stands there looking pretty dumb. And I am the one that's going to win this fight. All I have to do is wait it out. Now because I am firing slowly to of course manage the amount of arrows that I use on him I am going to be using heavy attacks the snake arrows can be obtained from the second tier of the Seth altar and they're quite easy to craft they only require branches and apart from that they kinda do only one damage of course on impact so Obviously, most of the damage will come from my bow with regards to the damage on impact. The rest of it will be from the dots. So that is why I would probably recommend using heavy attacks. I mean, this is a dull way of fighting it, but it is also a smart way of fighting it, if you guys ask me. And uh, to be fairly honest, as you can see, his health is going down. It's just a matter of waiting. I haven't tried building around here but I kinda don't want to just cause there are ways of doing it without actually having to build. Alternately you could probably bring a thrall with you and then maybe perch it up somewhere make sure the thrall has a good decent bow and of course you can find bows that are similar in damage to the dragon bow or the dragon bone bow. Uh, I just prefer this because I can repair it. Like for example, the legendary bows tend to be quite similar to that. I think there are one or two epics that can do that as well. So I did lose the stacks. I'm gonna dot them up again, back up to ten stacks. We want to keep those going. Now, of course, this being a world boss, he does have a ton of HP. He is meant to be difficult. However, as you can see, I'm having no difficulty at all slowly taking his HP down. Uh, even if you were to fight this guy on the ground, to be fairly honest, it would still take a long time to take him down just because he is that powerful. So, he does have a very good health pool. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but this way, simply no bother. I mean, this isn't the only perch that you, or, or the only place you can perch yourself up on. There are several locations. If you do know the area, there might be some better spots. And as you can see, I'm also not affected by the corruption because I am just outside of the corrupted area. Uh, where he was standing initially, if you do go up to him, that area will stack corruption on you. And so that is going to make this fight that much more difficult. 
You do want to fight them in an area that does not have corruption. Alternately, I do suggest and advise if you want to try and aim for his legs and apply that cripple. Uh, I do have my point. I think I've got uh, enough to... To, yeah, I think I've got like the amount of points required to do additional damage to targets that have a debuff and cripple would be a debuff so I would do more damage upon impact with the arrows uh, however as I said as I'm using the snake arrows they don't really do that much damage as is so I'm primarily for the purpose of this video just relying on the dot from the poison. Once you have the 10 stacks of poison on him, I would suggest not wasting your arrows and maybe just keeping the stacks up. Alternately, you could have a second bow that is loaded with damaging arrows swap that out for the snake arrows fire a couple of shots then swap out to the snake arrows just to keep the dots that is also an option and i don't know why i didn't do it in this video i guess i didn't think of it until now but nonetheless he will end up dying in due time i think if i had a second bow with just arrows uh designed to damage that would have made this guy go down a bit quicker but now that I thought about it that is probably something that you'll want to do so it is getting dark now um, I'm gonna end up having to play around with the admin settings I don't want this entire fight to or a lot of this fight going dark to be fairly honest so I think I'm gonna have to change that around I do want people to see what is going on and when night hits in this game it does get quite dark I'll wait it out a bit more and then I'll swap or I'll turn it into noon just so you guys can see what's going on at the moment he's just taking damage from the dots there's nothing all that special as long as I hit him with a bow from time to time he should be alright it's getting quite hard now though <laughs> okay there we go gonna have to be quick here there it is and that should do it there we go Okay, so he's got maybe a third of his health left. He's doing alright in terms of the pace at which he's dying. I mean, as I said, if you want to take him down, maybe bring a Thrall with you. Uh, once you get here, use uh, or interact with your Thrall and place it somewhere at a decent height where it can fire down on it. And I'd probably give it a good bow with some decent arrows. Uh, obviously that is not always going to work the thralls can be a bit derpy at times alternately also have a secondary bow specifically designed for damage so a good bow with damaging arrows and then swap to them after you've stacked up the 10 uh, stacks of poison fire a couple of shots with that then swap back to the poison arrows just to keep the dots going. Now, as you've seen up until now, he's not been able to get close to me. It does look like sometimes when he does turn around from this position that he's going to be able to get close to me, but he doesn't. So I'm quite safe up here. I think if I were to have been slightly lower, he would have been able to attack and hit me maybe. Do bear in mind most of his hits are 
uh, focus towards the ground anyways, so I'm not quite sure what the height is. I only showed you this little perch here because this is what I think to be the best place to be so that you're close enough to be able to hit it, but also far enough for it not to be able to attack you. The same rule of thumb applies to the green dragon. If you want to fight him, uh, there is a structure above him and you can just fire down from there. However, with the green dragon, from what I recall, he does have a lot of little dragons around him. So you will have to clean those out as well. So do bear that in mind. However, the same thing applies with the green dragon. So I'm not going to be making a separate video for that because... I think this one does describe how to pretty much do it. You don't even have to climb down. You just need to uh, go from behind a dragon. There's a tall structure that you can just get yourself up on and then just start firing down. As you can see, he doesn't go very far. Uh, he does try and reposition himself to try and hit me, but that's never going to happen due to where I'm placed. And the fact that I am just out of his range. So he is now very close to being dead. It shouldn't take much longer. And it roughly takes about 15 minutes to take him down with this method. Obviously, before that I did spend quite a bit of time doing the intro and kind of showing off the dragon and explaining what I was going to do but it takes about 15 minutes roughly to take him down with this method the other thing is as you saw there if you try and constantly aim for his leg you may end up missing because he does move about and so I personally prefer hitting the bigger object which is his body it's easier to hit even if he's moving there's a greater chance of my arrows landing on him. He's nearly dead. It's gonna be fun to see this guy ragdoll. They do tend to make a funny animation. Especially seeing as he's close to another obstacle in the game. So I wonder if he's gonna fly up. That normally tends to be the case. I think he's pretty much there. I'll fire one just for good measure. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, oh, there he goes. A dragon that actually flew. <laughs> Without wings, of course. So, let's have a look at this guy. As you can see over here, I'm already starting to get corruption. You'll want to harvest this guy. He does have some items, so the bosses in the unnamed city will drop some decent weapon they are of course legendary weapons and if you harvest him as you can see you get plenty of meat you also get the dragon bones which are always good for repairs my bow is pretty much broken and so this is what you get from this chest it's just uh, some really ordinary uh, good for nothing sort of loot but you always want to check just to be on the safe side that is it for this video folks i do hope that you have enjoyed it and found the information in this video useful if you have please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself and if you have just subscribed don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when i upload new videos also for those interested you can always find me on the sethtopia discord links to this of course you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe folks.